going to find a second solution to this given differential equations. You're given one of the solution y1, which is equal to t to the negative one. So now how do we find the second independent solution? So we're going to use the uh, following technique. It's called the reduction of order method. So we're going to assume that the general solution is equal to b of t, some function of t, times y1. And just to keep our um, writing simpler, I'm just going to write this as some function v times y1. And y1 is simply, we plug it in, which is t to the negative 1. And then we compute its first derivative, second derivative, and plug everything into this equation. Try to see if we can solve for it. So let's go ahead and do that. So if y is equal to this, then our y prime is going to be, we're going to differentiate this by using product rule since b is a function, y1 is a function. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So before that, let me go ahead and plug in what y1 is. So y is equal to b times t to the negative one. That is given to us. So using the product rule, y prime would be derivative of the first, that's v prime, keep the second, and then plus, now keep the first, differentiate the second. So you bring down the power and subtract one from the power. So y prime is really just v prime t to the negative one minus by rearranging v t to the negative two. So that is our expression for y prime. And now let's go ahead and get the expression for y double prime. So now I differentiate y prime to get y double prime. Again, using product rule. So let's do this piece first. So that is going to be equal to derivative of the first. So that's v double prime t to the negative one. And then plus, now differentiate t to the negative one. So that will give us a negative uh, v prime t to the negative two. So all of that is only for this piece right here. Now let's go ahead and differentiate the second piece. So that will be negative v prime t to the negative two, and then minus. Now, when we're differentiating this guy, we bring down negative two. So that's gonna make this a positive two v t to the negative third power. Now here, as you can see, you can combine some terms. Uh, these two are like terms, so I can combine them. So our y double prime simply becomes the expression v double prime t to the negative one minus two v prime t to the negative two, and then plus two v t to the negative three. So that will be our expression we're gonna sub in for y double prime. Now let's take a look at our differential equation. So just to uh, save some time, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this on the bottom and we're gonna start subbing in y, y prime and y double prime into this. So here's our differential equation. So we will have, uh, first we're going to do t squared times y double prime. Well, y double prime is this second box that we, uh, the third box, we uh, have it above. So that's right here. And then we're going to um, go ahead and put this in here. And then plus 3t times y prime. Well, y prime is this box right here, the second one. So I'm going to go ahead and sub that in here. And um, I will have to erase this part. So this is our y prime. And then plus y, well, y is our assumption. So that's the first box we got. So this one right here. So the one where we sub in y um, is equal to that. This is our assumption. All right, so now that I have successfully sub everything in, set it to zero, I start to uh, distribute and collect like terms. So, so here you distribute and here you distribute 3t, nothing to distribute on the last one. So this will clear out to v double prime, t squared times t to the negative one. By laws of exponents, that simplifies to just t. And then t squared times negative two v prime t to the negative two, that's negative two v. The t squared and t to the negative two will cancel. And the last term, we get plus two v t to the negative one. 
All right, now for the second parenthesis, we distribute a uh, positive 3t. So you'll get positive 3v prime, the t and the t to the negative one cancels, and then minus 3v t to the negative one by laws of exponents. And the last term, we just have plus v t to the negative one equals to zero. And now here you can combine a lot of the terms, they most likely will cancel. So for instance, um, as you can see, uh, this one right here, and this one right here, and this one right here, they actually cancel each other. So these guys cancel. So what we're left with is the three terms. Now here, if you look closely, these two are like terms. Uh, so I forgot to write down the prime here. That's why I don't see that. So when I distributed this, that's what I got, but I forgot to write the prime. I apologize for that. And as you can see, you can combine them. So you'll get V double prime T plus uh, V prime equals to zero. Now here, we're going to come up with the substitution. We're going to uh, introduce another variable. Let's say W. Let W stands for V prime and W prime is going to be V double prime. So then this second order reduces to a first order equation. Remember your independent variable is T. So W prime will be DW DT. You can also write it that way if you would like. So going back to my differential equation, now this by using reduction of order, this becomes W prime times T uh, plus W equals to zero. Now you can treat this as a linear equation or separable. I'm gonna go ahead and use separation of variables. I find that easier to uh, work with. So uh, now also, if you like, you can write this as dw dt. So just to make things look better. So dw dt times t is equal to negative w. I subtracted the w. Now here you should see that this is a separable equation or you can um, use the linear integrating factor method to uh, solve for w. So now if I separate the variables, I will divide by w on both sides. So I get one over w. Uh, dw is equal to negative one over t. I also divided by t multiplied by dt. Now here we can successfully go ahead and integrate both sides. So assuming t is positive, that was given to us beginning of the problem. We have ln of w on the left side is equal to negative ln of t on the right side plus some constant c. Now to solve for w, we're going to exponentiate both sides. So that would give us w is equal to uh, e to the negative ln of t plus c. Now this can also be written this way by laws of exponents e to the some constant c. Now that's really just a constant so I can really uh, ignore it and just put maybe c1 in front of it. And now here by using laws of logarithms I can uh, take care of this piece right here. This will be c1 e to the ln of t to the negative one. Now e and ln can cancel each other. So therefore our w is equal to c1 times t to the negative one, or simply c1 over t. All right, so we got w, but what is w? Well, w is right here. We said that this is equal to v prime. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that. So this is equal to um, v prime is equals to c1 t to the negative one, or let's use uh, the other format, c1 over t. So you know how to integrate that. So, well, v prime is uh, dv dt really, because your independent variable is t. So I'm just rewriting c1 over t. Now separate the variables again. So you'll have dv is equal to c1 over t times dt. So again, I use the separation of variables. Now I'm gonna go ahead and integrate both sides. So that leaves me with the following. On the left-hand side, I will just get V. On the right-hand side, I have C1 ln of T. No need the absolute value since we know T is positive. And plus another constant, C2. So there you have it, the function we've been waiting for. What is V? This is our V. Now we're ready to write down our second independent solution. But first, let's go back. So we're assuming that our general solution is of this form. So why? equal to v times t to the negative one. So that's what I'm gonna plug in right here. So y is equal to v times t to the negative one. 
I just computed V, so I'm going to plug in what V is. That's C1 ln of T plus C2 times T to the negative 1. So if you distribute T to the negative 1, you will have C1 T to the negative 1 ln of T plus C2 T to the negative 1. And there you have it. This is your second independent solution, whereas this is your first independent solution and that was given to us. So therefore, we can say that y2 has to be this uh, t to the negative 1 ln of t because their linear combination is the general solution, which we have right here. So the second independent solution is that.